Hey there, Mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 88. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. I have a question for you. What would you do with an extra five hours a day? (laughs) Would you take a nap? Would you watch a movie? Would you go on a walk? Would you scroll your phone? Hmm. How would you be able to show up for yourself and your family? And do you find yourself escaping the overwhelm of your life and the craziness and the chaos and the screaming kids by turning to your phone? Been there. Are you afraid to look at your screen time stats to let you know how long you've been spending on all those apps? Eek! Well, today's episode, we have a very special guest. It is my podcast coach, business coach, mentor, Stephanie Gass. And she's going to be sharing a very compelling story of how phone addiction was impacting her health, her relationships with her family, also how she was running her business, and the practical steps she took to overcome it. So spoiler alert, she was able to regain five hours a day and her overwhelm anxiety decreased significantly and the coolest thing is she's been able to grow her company which is now a multi six-figure company without instagram how cool is that so steph is a christian business and podcast coach a boundary boss love that and a multi six-figure ceo and she helps women grow their online businesses and make money online using podcasting she's the host of a top 20 globally ranked business podcasts, online business for Christian women, which I would highly recommend. Even if you don't know if you're going to start a business or not, there's a lot you can learn. And she believes it's possible to partner with God to create income and impact without sacrificing your family, faith, or buying into the social media hustle. I know you're going to love this conversation with Steph. She has so many practical steps for us to take so we can declutter our phone addiction and put our phones in their place. So what do you say? Grab the notebook and pen and let's dive into this conversation with Stephanie Gass. Hey there, Mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home, calendar, and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Well, hi, Steph. Thank you so much for coming on the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast. I am thrilled to talk to you today. Um, I'm so excited to be here, and you know this is one of my favorite topics, Mm -hmm. so looking forward to it. And you're one of my favorite people. (laughs) So everyone, if you don't know Steph, she is the reason that you are hearing us today because she is my podcast coach and my mentor and my clarity coach. Let's see, what other roles do you play? I don't know. There's too many. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) So I would love it if you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you and your family, kind of how you serve women, and then what you like to do in your quote unquote free time when you aren't doing all those other things. Sure. So uh, like Em said, I'm a podcast and business coach for Christian women, and I help them really figure out what am I called to do? Because I think we have all of this purpose that's like laid on us our whole life, like mom and some of us the wife and then business and like all these things. And so I believe at the root of everything are these giftings that we all have. And so many of us feel this nudge and this pull towards more, but we don't know what that is. And so that's the first thing that I do for women is figure out what's the thing, whether it's in ministry or in business, what's the calling that you want to go out and bring to the world. And then I help them create an actual business out of that thing using podcasting as the way that we grow our audience. 
and then coaching our courses as the way that we make money from this new business and serve people. And the reason that I do all of these things is because, you know, I built businesses in all the wrong ways for lots of years, uh, did corporate America, tried working for other people, tried network marketing, and like nothing ever really felt truly fulfilling. And so I ended up really just really going through a whole breakdown in my prior businesses and really surrendering to God. And he led me to this place of like, you don't have to do this the world's way. There's a way to do this that is peaceful and present and joyful. And that feels so great. And it's still successful. That still makes money and still makes impact. So that's what I do. It's crazy. I have a top 20 podcast in the entrepreneurship space. Now I have a team, like it's a whole thing. I can't believe it. Like when I look at what God has so graciously, you know, gifted and, and helped me with. And aside from that, I'm a mom. I've got two little boys, 10 and seven. I've got a boy sheep, a doodle. I'm very basic. Got the husband. We live in the mountains of New Mexico and, uh, we actually are having a snow day today. So we'll hope and pray that the kids stay watching their cute little, uh, Hey dude show. And, uh, that's my life. Wow. And yeah, you are a little bit ahead of me. So I have seven and five year old boys, but yes, hashtag boy mom. We're surrounded by all the guys. <laughs> oh, I know. Which is great. I would have it no other way. I know. I'm like, I don't even know how to put a bow in someone's hair. Like you do not <laughs> want it. It's a girl mom. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I love that uh, a little bit about your background and story because you really have helped me find clarity. And I know that a lot of the overwhelmed moms, they're so like in the weeds of their life. They wow. don't even know how to find, you know, maybe they've had that stirring or maybe even realize, wow, I have this calling, but they don't have the space in their brain or mm. also in their home. And that's kind of what we try to do here, help declutter the home head and heart. And I would love it if you could tell us a little bit about a season. Maybe it was yesterday. Maybe it was years ago when mm. you felt like an overwhelmed mom and maybe yeah. it was routines. Maybe it was how you were spending your time, whatever it may be. And what was the catalyst for you to change, to kind of wave that flag of surrender and be like, I can't do this anymore. And what did you do to make those changes? Yeah, for sure. I will say that there are little peaks of overwhelm, I think in all of our days. And so knowing that that is normal and that that is okay. But when we start getting into seasons of overwhelm and debilitating overwhelm, I actually label these discernment alarms. Because I believe that we are being shaken from like a Holy Spirit perspective. Faith is a big part of my life to take a look at like, whoa, like I'm either idolizing something, I'm lost in something, I'm chasing something, something isn't right in my life. And I believe that it's Holy Spirit alarming me that I need to make some changes. And so that is really, if you can start to shift your perspective to like, I'm in a season of overwhelm. Looking deeper into that overwhelm and asking yourself, like, what fundamentally needs to shift and change? And so an example of this from my life is back in 2017-ish, I had gone through a huge business failure. So my identity was completely rocked. I like, I didn't know who I was without success and all the fancy, you know, titles over my head. I was 60 pounds overweight because I had just had two kids in a couple of years. I had been eating my feelings. I have an addictive personality. So whether that was addicted to alcohol or addicted to food or like whatever the thing was, the vice that I was going to self-medicate with, like I was right on the brink of that too. And I was striving so hard to make myself successful again, because that's where I felt comfy and safe. Let me be successful. And we all have that, like insert whatever that is for you, right? Like Oh, I'm comfy and safe when I am being a good mom, or I'm comfy and safe when I am skinny. I'm comfy and safe when I'm shopping. Like there's always that place that we want to find ourselves where we're comfy and safe. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a thing to be aware of because we can easily cross that line, right? That gray line. Like God made me as a great, awesome leader, but the enemy knows that too. And so he can exploit. So I find myself in this space. And I am trying to raise a newborn, got a six month old, got a two and a half year old. I'm overweight. I'm dealing with the food. I'm dealing with the alcohol. I'm dealing with all these things. And I'm trying to find myself like again, you know, and I'm kind of, I had surrendered to God. I was working with God. I was like, okay, help me Lord refine who I am. But I was still holding like gripping on to business. 
I wouldn't surrender it because it was my comfy. So I'm like, I'll hold this and I'll figure this out because I'm going to be in control, but I'll surrender all the rest to you, you know? And so it was cool because I started to see God work in like, um, sobriety. I started to see God work in like my health and I was choosing better things. And I was working like he was working cause I had invited him in, but I was coveting this business bubble. And so what I believe to be true is I had to show up on social media, all these hours to rebuild my business and to create a brand. And so I was there, you know, and it's, it's just crazy now when I say it out loud, but like five to six hours a day. And I'm not proud of that. I think that um, if all of us go in and look at our phone time, it's something we won't be proud of. And so for me, Instagram was really this addictive vice that I had validated in my mind. I have to be there because this is how I'm growing the business. And I had just started the business that I have now. I'd started the pod. I think I had, oh, I was about to start the podcast. I had started coaching. I was doing Facebook lives and stuff like that. And I was every story I could capture. And I'm like, oh, the kids are doing something cute. Let me grab it so that I can resonate with my mom. Like, oh, somebody liked my post. Let me send them a DM. Like it was so much just like, and my heart behind it, I think was p- kind of pure. It was like, I want to grow and be successful again, but it was out of a selfish motivation of wanting to, to matter again. Like in my head, I thought I don't matter unless I'm successful. And so I'm doing all of these things all the while praying, like, you know how you like halfway let God in <laughs> Lord, like help me, you know, grow this business, but like, also don't tell me what not to do. Cause I don't want to, cause I, I knew, right. I had the discernment alarms. I felt overwhelmed all the time. I'm like, oh, my kid needs me. They, they threw the Cheerios down, but like, I can't deal with that right now because I'm trying to Instagram the person over here. That's a lead. And like, oh, I would walk around and have like a headset on my ear all the time. And like, it was just this, I was struggling with wanting to be a good present mom, but unwilling to surrender the thing that was keeping me from it. And so I found myself in that really hard space. And I finally, the prayer started shifting to like, Lord, help me to make this easy. Like, this is so hard. It's so much. I'm so tired. I don't know what to change. Like open my eyes basically. And I don't remember if it was a church service or a a podcast I was listening to, like God will speak through people in your life and scenarios in your life. And I just heard like, lay it down. Like you're going to fast from, and I was like, Ooh, it's social media. Cause it was like, what should you fast from? Like social media. I just wrote it down super quick, social media. Okay. So I ended up and I had, I think I had like one or two people on my team at this point. I had started the podcast, but I was still showing up five to six hours a day on this platform. And so I was like, that's it. I'm going to turn off Instagram specifically for a month. And at this point I had been toying with turning it off on the weekends. And I had felt this like shift in my heart when I would get off of social, I didn't have to touch my phone all the time. And I realized during those weekends that I would delete Instagram, that I had an addiction because I would have to touch the phone. I'd try to find the box. I'm like, where is it? Oh, I deleted it. And then this really big, like revelation hit me one day I'm sitting down, I'm looking outside. There's a beautiful sunset coming up and my coffee is sitting positioned so perfectly on the, on the table next to me. I'm reading my Bible and I'm like, Oh, I should take a picture. So I get the phone. I go to find Instagram and I'm like, Oh, I don't have it on. It's Saturday. And then I stopped and I went, I don't really want the picture. Like, I just want to be in it. I just want to be in this. Like, wow. It was like this, just like awareness hit me why are you taking the photos? Is it for you or is it for them? And it it just really hit me like a ton of bricks. And so all these things God had kind of been like preparing my heart for. So I get off of Instagram for a month. The overwhelm completely fell away. I'm like, I could see clearly. I feel like I could breathe deeper I wanted to cook for my family again. I wasn't always looking for my phone. I lost it all the time. My husband's like, why why aren't you answering your phone? I'm like, I don't know where it is and I don't care. Like it was lost in my closet. One time it was in the fridge. I'm like that person, you guys. And so, but I, I felt so present. And here's the crazy thing. I got back five hours a day, a day. And I had to be careful not to fill it with other because, you know, 
crack is crack. So we're like, let me fill Instagram with YouTube. So like, we have to be careful. Phone is the problem. It's not always necessarily the app that we're choosing to fill that with, right? We have a computer in our hand and the highest paid engineers in the world are being paid to keep you addicted because of the ad revenue. Like we ain't dumb. This is what's happening. So we need to get in front of it. So anyways, I... I looked at the business because I thought I was on Instagram for the business and revenue went up. The email list went up. Everything exploded in my life. From a business perspective, I didn't need it. From a personal perspective, I didn't want it. And so we kept going. We went six months as a company. Personally, I wasn't on there at all. And now it's been a year and a half and I still do not use Instagram on a personal level. And my overwhelm Like if you ask me the percentage of time that I feel overwhelmed in a weekly basis, I would say maybe like 5%. And I think that's really crazy because if you would have asked me back then when I was constantly addicted to my phone, I would have told you that I was overwhelmed 90% of my time. So there's a big, there's just a huge like flashing red solution in front of all of our eyes, but we're so afraid to look at it. That's a long answer. Have fun. That's a great answer. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) I think that there are for moms, whether they're starting a business or not, there are acceptable ways to escape and unacceptable might be that your husband gets home and you're like, peace out. I'm going to go to the bar for a couple hours, you know, like probably not socially acceptable having the glass or two of wine with dinner, which is what I did for a long time, you know, maybe more socially acceptable, Yeah. Uh, but our phones completely socially acceptable. Not only yep. that it's encouraged yes. because not only like you said, because of the people designing uh, the phones and the apps, yep. but also, you know, we have this, the fear of missing out, whether that be on the personal level or the business side of things and just like feel that feeling like we need to check because something is missing. Or like you said, not being able to be in the moment and feeling like I should be capturing this and sharing it. And you have actually helped me transform my relationship with my phone and with Instagram specifically, because I thought as a fledgling business owner that I needed to grow my following and be on there all the time and do the lives and see my kids doing cute things and all of it. And When you think back about not only the time that we spent doing it, but just that our phones are not only addictive, but they're very stimulating. Mm -hmm. So if we're already Mm -hmm. overwhelmed, we're thinking that it's going to help us calm down, but it's actually stimulating us more. And I think that awareness piece, like you said, that discernment alarm, we hear that sometimes, but we don't think that laying the phone down or changing our relationship with our phone is going to change things. It's like, well, this is the way that I get away from my screaming kids and the fact that my house is a mess and everything is chaotic. And so I guess you were mentioning some of it, but if an overwhelmed mom is listening and she's like, wow, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I have this unhealthy relationship with my phone. What would be some like warning signs or things that you think that she should look out for to help her understand? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that this is going to look different for each of you. For me, it began with like, who is the person that I want to be? what kind of mom do I want to be? What kind of wife, what kind of home do I want to pour into and, and, you know, what kind of friend? And so I started to ask these deeper questions around who I wanted to become and who God had created me to be. And I wasn't hurt. I wasn't listening. Well, when my children would speak to me, I was looking at my phone or like wanting to touch the phone. Um, I wasn't showing up in my marriage with everything that I could be. I wasn't a great friend. But I can tell you that I was finding time to post stuff all the time, but I wasn't finding time to call. I wasn't finding time to go to coffee with you. And so as I started to realize this and I started to inventory, what is the culprit of these, of me not being the woman that God created me to be? There was one consistent answer and it was the phone. And so the warning signs for me were like, who do I want to be and how am I living my life? Do a two-day inventory of your life 
be super aware. Are you interacting with the people around you in a way that is truly transformational to them? Like I think about if I'm the hands and feet of Christ and I sit down to coffee with someone, how do I treat them like Jesus would treat them? He would be all, he would be listening, looking in their eyes, hearing them, serving, connecting deeply, not I wonder if anybody texts me like it's so dumb and I get it. Like I'm in that space too. I fight it. I fight it continuously, but I've trained myself and I've overcome the addiction. So there is hope in this, but those are the warning signs that you're going to want to look for. You're going to want to look for fidgety. Are you fidgeting for the dopamine hit? It's like any other addiction. You're, you're panicking when you can't find the phone. As soon as you get the phone, you click the same three things over and over email scroll, I scroll, click the you, TikTok scroll. Like it's what's happening is you are, your body is craving a dopamine hit. So you're going to the three places you might get a dopamine hit over and over and over hundreds of times every single day. That is a huge warning sign that something needs to change. Yeah. It's interesting. So I, not every day, but I wear leggings a lot. And one of the things about being a mom in this day and age is you have leggings with the pockets on the (laughs) side, right? We're like, Oh my gosh, this is so great. Well, I find myself sometimes tapping it almost like a pack of cigarettes in the back of your pocket. Where's my phone? Where's my phone tapping? Right. And the other thing you mentioned as far as like, are, you know, showing up as the mom that you want to be. Sometimes I think of things from a perspective of what are people going to say about me at my funeral? Mm. What are my children going to say about me? And if I were to pass unexpectedly and they're at my funeral, I don't want them to say something like, oh, I remember mom always used to say those three little words, just a minute right? That, you know, because I know because it's like, oh, okay, well, just a minute, let me finish this text. Just a minute. Let me see how many plays my reel has, which is a place I found myself before I found you was like, oh, look, my reel is trending. Doesn't matter if I'm, you know, I'm passed away and Jesus and God, they're not going to be like, Hey, by the way, how many plays did you get on that reel? Great job on the real, you know? (laughs) And you know what that says to them, Em? It says you are less important than this device. And the other thing for me was like, what adulthood life do I want my kids to lead? Like they are going to learn by sight, not by sound. They watch us and they learn and they internalize. And I'm like, I do not want to be the reason that my children are staring at a screen 24 seven when they are married, when they have children, like that's not going to be my fault because I modeled that behavior. Granted, technology is a part of our lives, but we must make changes and we must have boundaries. And you've noticed, you said about sort of your overwhelm and stress levels and kind of how it's impacted your health. And obviously you were making other changes to your health as far as like movement and nutrition Mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But What were some, I guess, of the benefits that you found as far as, like you said, like your presence, like your ability to be present, not only with friends and family, but specifically as a mom with kids. Cause sometimes it's hard when like, number one, they keep her mom, 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 but also like, mom, can you see me do this thing with Legos? And you're like, okay, I have to pretend this is super interesting. I know. (laughs) And how do you like keeping that focus where it's like, no, you're not having the little voice in your head. Like, I wonder if anyone texted me. I wonder if there's a message. How have, how has that shifted for you? Mm. Yeah. And I think this is an evolution. Okay. So to be really frank with you guys, this has been like a six year journey to now where I got off the social media apps completely. I deleted them from my phone on weekends for three years. Like I wasn't fully ready to completely break like God knows. Right. And he'll help you tiptoe into it. So like training yourself to ultimately get where you want to go. And then the second one was the fast. And the next one was like Instagram being completely gone. Another one for me is like, there are no notifications on my phone at all. And so there, what, what happened in my brain is that there is nothing to check because I don't have any notifications. I don't have them on. Like, I don't even have notifications. I have emergency people, Brad, my mom, and the boys school. Those will come through and actually notify me. Anyone else, I have to actually open the messages app to see that you've messaged me. 
And the reason that I did that is to retrain my brain that I'm only going to, to deal with the phone when I am in a phone block of time. Now, this is not perfect. Okay. And I'm a human and I fail at this all the time, but my goal for myself is like, if I can just maybe check the phone, like maybe five minutes every hour, that's great. I'll check in. Did anybody call me? Did anybody text me? Do I have Voxers from my team? Let me deal with it. Now we're going to put the phone away again. And so some of those practices have helped me to be really present because there is nothing to check. You have to remove the substance, right? Anything that we're addicted to, if you have it laying right in front of you, what are you going to do? You're going to drink it. You're going to eat it. You're going to spend it. Like you have a bag of Oreos sitting in front of you and you're trying to eat clean, like probably the not the best idea. And so for me, it was like, let me check the phone. Let me communicate to people who matter what I'm doing here. Guys, I'm going to be trying to detox from the phone. I'll check it every hour. Where can it go live so that you know where it is and we're not panicking, but we don't have to tap it like the cigarette box. So for me, for a long time, I had to put it on in the phone box. So there would be a box in the living room. There was one in my bedroom and we had this shelf too on our coffee nook. The phone was in one of those three places. I just set it there. And so that I could be free. If I have it on my person, in my pocket, within reach, I'm going to touch it. I'm going, it's an addiction. It is literally, and that's me doing work on this for six years. I will still touch the phone. So those of you who are like, you're feeling something, you're feeling some conviction right now. Imagine how much harder it is for you starting on day one. Don't go, don't tiptoe in, like decide. I'm putting the phone in the phone box. You can even set a timer if you feel like I'm going to go check in an hour. Fine. You can go check in an hour of the phone. But anyway, those things really helped. And how did it shift my presence? Man, I don't know if you guys can relate to this feeling of like, I just heard something. Like I heard what the kids asked me or like what my husband's saying but I'm not listening because I'm thinking about the addiction, the phone, the click, the thing. Eh. And I'm like, I, I'm like so embarrassed to be like, I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that? And so I'm trying to be like, now I'm super mindful around like, if I'm listening to a team boxer and like Landon's talking, I'm like, buddy, like just, a, just a minute. Right. Or I'll say just a minute to my boxer. And like, I can only, you can only do one thing at a time and do it well. So now it's like, if I can look at you and I'm not worried about my phone, I can actually hear you and I can answer you with intention. The thing I don't want my kids to say to me at my funeral is like, I never felt like my mom really saw me. I never felt like she really listened. That's like, I refuse for that to be my story. And I refuse for that to be their story. And so I just feel like I can listen. And here's the other weird one. I feel like I can remember. So I'm a little ADHD or a lot. I'm not sure. But it's hard for me to retain and remember. And I think that's also culturally happening with the way that our um, the dopamine hits and how we have such a short attention span. It's getting shorter and shorter every year. But I felt like I could never remember anything. Like, what did I do yesterday? What did I do that? Like, because we're filling our brain with so much, the scrolling, the clicking, the checking, the incessant, like, I have a question. Let me Google it. It's so much decision fatigue going on in our brain all day long, every hour, every minute. There's actually no room and space to think, to remember uh, for God to speak to you, there is no room in there. So like, we've got to clean out the noise. And then I noticed my memory got better. My conversations got deeper. I became much more aware too. I would notice when people weren't listening to me because I was now listening. And so those things really shifted and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. It's been so impactful. I'm kind of on my own journey as well. And like you said, there's the intention behind it, recognizing how you want to show up and then putting the blinders on or the boundaries there or in habits. I've heard about restraining forces. Like for example, you take the apps off your phone, you know, you only go on Facebook if it's on your laptop and not yes. your phone, like yes. being able to put those boundaries, like what can make an unhealthy choice or an unhealthy habit more difficult to do 
and we want to put those boundaries in place. But I think that those are a lot of like really practical solutions, especially since you're six years into it. Yes. <laughs> like you said, in counting. And there's, and there's more, like there's levels to this that I want to explore even more. I was watching a YouTube the other day and this guy, he's a minimalist and there's these new minimal phones and they're just great. Like there's nothing cool about them. They're like old school, like the flip phone. And I'm like, oh man, one day, baby. Like I want to go. So I just want to be totally free from this thing. And I'm not ready today for those things, but I think there's so much more growth in this area, even for me. And here's another tactical one that might fit some of you. Cause some of you may like what we've said so far, right? Like delete the apps on your phone on weekends. But one of the other ones for me was creating a boundary around when my family was home. So I'm in the luxury now of having my kids in school full time. My husband has a regular nine to five hours and I work from home full time. So I can be more available on my phone during work time, as long as I can be intentional with work, but, um, come like four thirty, five o'clock, I'm going to need to lose my phone again. So that's also a practice for me that I've been really working on. Like, let me lose my phone so that I'm not tempted to not be available and present from like five to 8 PM. And then when everybody's vegging on the couch or whatever, I can, I can use my phone again. Right. Cause I like to use my phone in the evenings and scroll Pinterest or whatever I'm going to do. And that's okay. But the boundary work is what's important and what's feeling aligned in your heart. So when I, I think a good question to ask yourself, if you're like, I don't really know is like, Lord, what should this look like for me? The question for me is always like, am I glorifying God in this? So am I glorifying God and using my phone 24 seven? Definitely not. I'm idolizing this addiction. Am I glorifying God and showing up and serving my team for five minutes every hour? I think so. You know, am I glorifying God and like everybody's busy watching a show and like, I want to text somebody I haven't spoken to in a while. Sure. Just if you can kind of put that filter on, I think it helps you to make more moral choices that are more aligned with who you want to become. And, um, it's hard. This is hard work because you're going to go against the grain. This is not what the world says. This is not what you're going to see even in your own family. Sometimes my husband's going to be on his phone and I just have to be who I am and speak life into what I believe to be right, but not force someone else to change. I think that's something you guys are going to face. And knowing that there is always an answer with God. So even if you're like, oh, I'm too far gone. I've tried. It hasn't worked for me. Like, What are you gripping onto so tightly that you haven't let him come into? Because there is 100% a solution for everything that we face. And my, my phrase for 2023 was lay it down and I'm probably just going to keep it for 2024 because I feel like it's always that is that constant surrender. It's the constant laying it down and realizing what you're idolizing, being able to recognize that, not feeling shame about it, but just being able to just surrender that and to give that and to say, okay, well now I'm going to try to do, you know, a little bit better, right? Every day. 1% better every day. 1% better. Exactly. So Steph, this has been amazing. You are like, so important in my life. I'm going to try not to cry. Yo, um, just you wouldn't, have. wouldn't have been on this journey if it wasn't for you. I just have so much um, respect for you as a person and just how you pour out. You just continue to pour out and you just bless everyone that has the pleasure to know you. So now I really am crying. So oh, um, <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. I receive it all. I receive oh, it. Oh, well, Thank well as I dry my tears, um, can you please tell everyone how they can connect with you? <laughs> yes. So Come and check out the podcast, friends. It's online business for Christian women. And whether you have a business or you're curious about it or you want to start a ministry, um, I've got over 700 episodes to support you in that. And then my website is stephaniegass.com. That's S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E-G-A-S-S. I have free workshops and freebies and all the fun stuff that you guys can check out over there. And I can't wait to meet you. Yay. Thank you so much, Steph. I'll make sure to link to all of that in the show notes. And I just really appreciate your time. So thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Big hugs. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact, but 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.